Hello and welcome back to Music Repo where I share lots of tips and tricks on home recording studio setup and how to improve your music making with technology. This video is going to be a quick step-by-step -step guide for music teachers who want to get started teaching online and not surprisingly I've been asked a lot about this in the last few days and weeks while everyone is locked down at home so now is as good a time as any to master the technology and transition your face-to-face -face music lessons online. I really have hope this will help you out. Now I'm going to start by looking at the kind of hardware you'll need, whether you teach an acoustic instrument like violin, guitar, clarinet or so on, or electronic instrument like digital piano, keyboard or electric guitar. The same hardware will be useful whether you want to do live face-to-face -face lessons on software like Zoom or Skype, or if you want to pre-record your lessons. I will then have a look at how you incorporate the hardware in Zoom and I'll also talk very briefly about how you might use it if you want to pre-record your lessons with video. Now as always if you have any questions then do post them below or if you have any suggestions for follow-up videos and blog posts then just let me know. And if this is of interest to you, please do hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you get to be the first to see my future tips and tricks on home recording studio setup and music making with technology. And also you can really help me out if you give the video a thumbs up. So let's dive in and get those lessons online. The focus of this video is to get your home studio set up so you can capture your voice and instrument for online music lessons. I'll start by looking at the hardware for acoustic instruments, then move to electronic instruments like digital piano and electric guitar, and finally I'll have a look at the audio setup in Zoom. I'll talk a little bit about syncing audio and video if you're going to pre-record your lessons, and I'll put links to each section in the description below so you can go straight to them if you wish. I'm going to start out by looking at the hardware you might use if you want to teach any acoustic instrument. In other words, you're looking at some kind of microphone setup. You could start out by trying your computer's built-in microphone and speakers. You adjust the input and output volumes in the sound settings or control panel, and then you will need to experiment with where is the best place to position your laptop. However, you will get a much better result if you upgrade your recording equipment. The most cost-effective and easy upgrade would be to buy a USB microphone. If you check the links below, or the card I've just posted above, then I have tested most of the best-selling USB microphones, so you can check out my video reviews and listen to recordings I've made with them. My advice would be to buy one with headphone output and volume control so that you can directly monitor the sound of your voice and instrument. By experimenting with position and settings, you should get a very good result. I've tested and would recommend either one of the Blue Yeti microphones, or the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB, or the Rode NT USB. All of them are easy to set up and use and give excellent results. A USB mic will enable you to be much more flexible about where you can position the mic in relation to your laptop, and the beauty is you don't need anything else, although I would recommend that you invest in a microphone stand so you can have more flexibility about microphone placement. All the above USB mics come with standard fittings, so you can use them with a mic stand rather than just the desktop stand they come with. Nearly all the USB mics are just plug and play, so they're very simple to set up and then it's just a case of selecting that microphone as your input and output device in the sound settings or control panel. So let's take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of using a USB microphone for your online music lessons. They are super easy to install and set up, so you don't need any other additional equipment, they just work out of the box. You get very good sound quality for a very reasonable price and they work very well with Zoom, Skype and other conference software. There's not too much fiddling about. You get them working with your computer and then they will work with the software out of the box. And they're perfect if you are teaching acoustic instruments and then you want to add your voice as well. The disadvantage is they are not suitable for electronic instruments. So if you're teaching digital piano or electric guitar, then a USB mic is not going to be so good for that and they are much less versatile than an interface and microphone setup, which is what we'll have a look at next. If you upgrade your setup to include an audio interface, then you will have even more flexibility and setup options. A simple two-channel interface like this Focusrite Scarlett 2i4 will allow you to connect a good quality microphone to broadcast your voice and acoustic instrument. You can also use the second input to plug in your guitar or use it to connect an additional specialist microphone from your acoustic instrument. That way 
your students should hear a good audio signal from both you and your instrument. But what if you have a digital piano or other electronic instrument or electric guitar? Starting with the digital piano, I have made videos and written extensively about how to record the sound of your digital piano or keyboard. But if you want to set yourself up for online music lessons with digital piano or music keyboard or electronic drums or similar, then you need to consider your setup so you can broadcast your voice as well as your instrument. Here are a few options. With a two-channel interface, you could plug your microphone into one input and then a mono signal from your keyboard into the other. Or a better solution would be to invest in a small mixing console. So here's my setup. I have a microphone plugged into one of the microphone inputs on the mixer. I have the AUGS output of my piano connected to two line inputs on the mixer. I've then got the left and right line outputs from the mixer going into the two line inputs of my audio interface. It's a simple setup that works really well and sounds really good. I can easily broadcast both my voice and keyboard at the same time. What about electric guitar? There are several ways you can connect up your electric guitar and again I've made an in-depth video about how to record electric guitar. For teaching though, you do need to be able to combine your voice with your guitar. With a simple two-channel interface, you could connect a microphone and then plug your guitar directly to the second input. However, it is unlikely you will want to simply broadcast the dry signal from your guitar. One option would be to place a microphone in front of your guitar amp and have another microphone for your voice. The two mics could then be plugged into the audio interface's dual microphone inputs. Alternatively, take the line out from your guitar amp or effects pedals and connect to the line input and your interface. This will work fine if your output is mono. If you want to capture a stereo signal from your amp or effects, then you would need to have a small mixing console, just as we did with the digital piano, so that you could combine your voice and the sound from your guitar and effects in the mixing desk, then take the outputs from the mixer to the interface. Let's briefly consider multi-channel audio interfaces, because another option will be to purchase an interface with multiple inputs to accommodate your mic and instruments. Do beware if you go this route that it may take a little more experimenting and setup to get Zoom or other software to receive the outputs from the interface satisfactorily. You'll probably have to use the control panel software for your interface to route the multiple outputs. Or there are other options to get around the issue. If you are in this situation, then do look in the description below where I've linked to further resources about how to set up a multi-output audio interface so that it will work with conferencing software. Because of the complexity, I would be more in favour of a two-channel interface and a mixing console to get set up for online music lessons. However, if you think that at some point you may wish to record your vocals and the outputs from your instrument at the same time, but on different audio tracks in a door, then you may prefer to go for a multi-channel interface and accept that the setup with conferencing software may be a bit more complex. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at how you use Zoom conference software in music mode. This means that if you're using Zoom for online music lessons, fitness classes, virtual choirs, orchestra, any application where music is involved, you need to make sure the settings are optimised for that music streaming. First of all, if at all possible, use your desktop computer or laptop to run your meetings or classes. Download the Zoom client for meetings onto your desktop or laptop. You navigate to zoom.us and navigate to the download section. And so get that installed. For best practice, make sure your computer is located as close as possible to your router for the best Wi-Fi signal you can get, or even better if you can, connect it up using an ethernet cable and shut down all the other apps and notifications that you've got running in the background if you can, so that all your computer resource is concentrated on running Zoom as efficiently as possible. And also you're not going to get distracted by windows popping up and so on. Now we've got that all installed and our computer set up, let's open Open up the Zoom client and when you open it up you should come on the home screen if you're not here then you just need to click home here and then you need to access the settings by clicking on this gear icon here okay once you're in the settings navigate to the audio tab here now this is where you select the correct speaker and microphone. Now the microphone is obviously the device that is going to transmit your speaking and playing. And the speaker is where you will hear the sound of your student or collaborators. 
Now, at the moment, I have got this set up so that I'm listening and playing through my interface. And if you remember, I've got my interface set up so that I've got my piano and my microphone going into a mixing desk that is then going to the inputs of the interface. So as I speak now, you can see that my voice is being picked up by the microphone. Now, the first thing you will need to do is make sure you uncheck this box. You don't want Zoom to automatically adjust microphone volume. You want to have complete control of the volume yourself. Now, on an interface, the controls for the volume, both output and input, are done via the interface, not via the computer control panel. So you'll see here that if I try and adjust these, then they will snap back because I'll adjust the volumes on my interface. OK, now I can just check that this is all working because obviously it's picking up the sound of my voice. If I just play my piano. OK, you can also hear the sound of my piano. So that's being picked up too. Great. So that's the first important setting. What I'm going to do now is show you what would happen if I chose my USB microphone instead as my input and output device. Now I would hear my students or collaborators through the headphones attached to my USB mic. I've got my USB mic connected. So again, that is picking up my voice. Here I can adjust the volumes for the input and output. So I need to just play with these until I've got the optimum settings, both for what I can hear and what's being transmitted. And you can test the microphone here and you can test the speaker to test the volumes. So far, so good. We've unchecked that. Now let's go into the advanced settings. And this is probably the most important setting. Make sure you check this box here so that you show in meeting option to enable original sound. And if you hover over that, you'll see it says this will turn off audio enhancements such as echo cancellation and noise suppression. And that's exactly what you want it to do. Those so-called audio enhancements are great if you're running a conference in a crowded office with air conditioning fans and people banging doors and scraping chairs and so on. But they're a disaster when you're trying to stream audio. You will find the audio signal chops in and out and it just isn't the kind of good quality signal that you want. So make sure you check that box. Now, as a belt and braces thing, I like to disable the background noise, both the persistent and the intermittent here as well, so that I know that it's not going to do any playing around with the audio signal. I'm going to be transmitting exactly what I can hear in my interface or in my USB microphone. OK, so now we've done those settings. When we begin a new meeting, we get a screen that looks like this. Always join with computer audio so that you're using your external microphone or your interface. OK, now what you should see this here, which says turn off original sound. When it says turn off original sound, that means that you are using the original sound from your interface or your microphone. That's exactly what you want. And you can click this down arrow here to make sure which device you're using. Now, in this case, I want to be using my interface. That's correct. So great. Now, if we go down here next to where it says mute on this microphone, there's an upward arrow. And, and you see, you can always select a microphone and select a speaker here. You can also test your speaker and microphone and you can also access the audio settings from within the meeting as well so that you can go if you've forgotten something or it doesn't seem to be quite right. You can test them out here. That is how you go about setting up Zoom for music applications of any kind. It's now possible to use the original sound if you're running Zoom on your mobile device. So you do this slightly differently. If you open up the Zoom app and go to the settings icon and then click on meetings, you'll see that you can scroll down to where it says use original sound and you can actually turn that on so that when you're running a meeting from your mobile device, you can use that original sound setting just like you can on the desktop. That will turn off the echo cancellation and noise suppression and you'll get a better audio stream if you do choose to use a mobile device. Don't forget to communicate these settings to your students or collaborators so that they optimise their audio settings as well, by the way. 
Finally, let's briefly look at how to produce pre-recorded video music lessons ready to share online. Now that you have your recording equipment set up, whether you're using a USB mic or an audio interface, you will use that to make a good quality audio recording of your lesson on your computer in recording software such as Audacity or any door. Meanwhile, at the same time, you use whichever camera you have to hand, whether it's a compact camera, a DSLR or maybe mobile device and record your video. Don't mute your camera, make sure that it is also recording audio as well as video. Then the final step is to combine the good quality audio recording with your video file. I use Camtasia video editing software, but you can do the same thing in iMovie, Final Cut Pro or whichever video editing software you use. You can see here that in my media bin, I have my video file and audio file ready to combine. You'll note that I've named them similarly so that I can match them up because when you have a lot of video and audio files, you'll get confused if you don't have some kind of naming system. Now, if I add them both to the timeline at the same place, the software set up so that I can actually view the audio waveforms. Now it's just a case of lining up the two files. The easiest way to do this is to clap three times at the beginning of a take. You then have a very obvious set of audio spikes that are easy to line up. When you have the audio file lined up exactly with the video, you can then silence the audio component of the video file so that all you'll hear then is the separate good quality audio recording and it should exactly match up with your voice and mouth movements. You can then cut the opening section, which you don't want to show your students, and it's also possible to group together the audio and video files to make editing easier as you go through and cut and paste and so on. Obviously, this is just a quick look at how you get good quality audio for your online music lessons. You'll need to refer to other resources for details on how to position your cameras, lighting and so on. Well, I hope I've covered everything you need to get started with your online music lessons. Remember, any questions, comments, suggestions, post them below. Please like the video and do share it if you know other music teachers who might benefit. I post videos on home recording, studio setup and music making with technology, particularly aimed at beginners. So do subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.